Five riders with the independent team rocking the podium of the factory team. Time Master Pool at Thunder Valley Motocross 2023. The reason I've collected these overachievers is that at Thunder Valley Time Master Pool tossed a hell of stone at the Goliaths of the 450 class. Charging from the back in Moto 1 to rise from 40th to 5th is something you'd expect from a factory superstar which Ty used to be in the 250 class. It can be argued that round 3 of the 2023 Pro Motocross Championship was Ty's greatest day in the pros to date and it came on a new bike in a new class. Unprecedented for someone in his situation, Ty showed the motocross world that his skill level is top tier whether the support is or not. Justin Brayton at Steel City 2009 September 5th might end up having to be National Privateer Appreciation Day as that date in 2009 serves as the only time in motocross history that the premier class had both motos won by two different privateers. While Chad Reed wrapped up a rather unlikely championship, Justin Brayton was able to capture his only moto victory during the second moto at Steel City. An 11th in Moto 1 kept him off the top two steps of the podium, but putting his 2009 no-link MDK Motorsport KTM 450 on the podium with a third overall had to feel good. Tommy Hahn, Steel City 2009 In recent history, all-time privateer glory may very well belong to a young Tommy Hahn. The Canadian slash motosport.com Kawasaki team didn't have a 2009 to write home about until the last round of the year. With an average finish of ninth rolling into the final round, I'm sure not many in attendance had Tommy Hahn going one or four for the 450 overall win, but that's exactly what happened. I wouldn't say Tommy backed into the win either. With a win in the first moto ahead of would-be champion Chad Reed, he still needed a solid ride in moto 2 to put the victory on ice and he did exactly that. With two privateers on the podium at the final round, I think September 5th is a strong candidate for National Privateer Day. Mike Alessi at Steel City 2004 Shrouded in gossip and controversy, Mike Alessi's long-awaited pro debut was as unconventional as it gets. The longtime Honda pilot didn't join Factory Connection Honda or Factory Honda to compete in the 122 class following another dominant performance at the Loretta Lenz Amateur National Motocross Championships. Contract disputes and the growing narrative of the Alessis being tough to work with put a cloud over the emergence of this seemingly can't-miss prospect. The previous week, instead of challenging James Stewart in the 122 class, Mike in the Alessi camp took a swing at Ricky Carmichael, who at the time was working on his second of two perfect seasons outdoors. Millville was ugly for Alessi, but Steel City told a different story. Aboard a privateer Honda CRF 450R, a 16-year-old Mike Alessi captured his first professional podium to silence the critics and solidify him a ride with Red Bull Factory KTM for 2005. Love or hate Mike Alessi, the kid had skills. Chad Reed at Hangtown 2011 Okay, he's a former champion in this class at this point, but this was Chad's best result at Hangtown, and it came on a very privateer Honda CR450R. The opening round of the 2011 Pro Motocross Championship seemed like a table set for two for Ryan Dungey to battle Ryan Viopoto, who had dethroned Dungey as Supercross champion only two weeks prior. Many in the know didn't forecast the drive and determination of Australia's Chad Reed, who would leave round one with the red plate after one of the most impressive privateer rides ever. Both Viopoto and Dungey are all-timers, and for Chad to beat both on a non-factory-backed motorcycle is nothing short of amazing. My wig was blown back.